Hello everyone, today we will be starting with Enzymology, Enzymology part 1. So what are enzymes? Okay, so enzymes are nothing but they are biocatalysts. Catalyst means it enhances the rate of reaction but it unalters the equilibrium of the reaction. So enzymes are same, they are catalysts but they are catalysts in the biological system. So they are called biocatalysts. They enhance or accelerate the rate of the reaction without affecting the equilibrium of the reaction. So what are the features of enzymes? So uh, if you compare uh, an, a reaction which is happening without enzyme, a reaction which is happening with the help of enzyme. If you see the reaction rate will be very much higher for the reaction which is catalyzed by enzyme. Okay, so compared to the non-enzyme uh, uh, uncatalyzed reaction, the enzyme catalyzed reaction will have higher rate. You can see the rate will be around 10 to the power 10. Okay, that much times the rate will be accelerated with the help of enzyme and milder reaction conditions. For example, the temperature will be, uh, the temperature requirement for the enzyme to be active will be less than 100 degree. Okay, so there are minimal conditions or circumstances which are required for the activity of the enzymes. So the requirement or the required conditions are very minimal or milder in case of enzymes. Okay, so if there is no enzyme, you have to provide with heat, you, you have to provide other forms of energy, for example, heat. But when enzyme is present, uh, the, that much amount of energy is not required. So, so this enzyme can act with the minimum requirements. Okay, minimum temperature, minimum atmospheric pressure, minimum pH. Okay, so it basically requires only very minimal standard conditions greater substrate specificity yes so the enzyme is specific to substrate so only that substrate gets converted to product okay so it has substrate specificity and a capacity for regulation if you see an uh, un, a reaction which is happening without the help of enzyme it cannot be regulated but if it, the reaction is happening with the help of enzyme the enzyme can be regulated thereby the reaction can be regulated so these are the features if the reaction uh, has enzyme as catalyst to accelerate the rate of reaction so higher reaction rate milder reaction conditions required for the enzyme to be active and greater reaction specificity and the reaction can be controlled and regulated so what are the biological functions of enzymes? They have many roles. They are responsible or required for the digestion of the macromolecules and the metabolism of the macromolecules. They are developed, uh, they are required for the muscular contraction and they are required for coagulation. They are required for the cellular growth. If the enzyme is deficient, it will result in inborn error of metabolism. So there are list of inborn error of metabolisms which occur when the enzymes are deficient in carbohydrate metabolism, uh, lipid metabolism and amino acid metabolism. So enzyme has a wide role in the biological system. It plays its role everywhere. So what are the properties of these enzymes? If you see enzymes, all the enzymes are protein except ribozyme. Ribozyme is an RNA. Okay, so all the enzymes, enzymes are proteins except ribozymes which is which is RNA and it exhibits all the properties of a protein because the enzymes are protein so it exhibits all the properties of a protein and these enzymes require coenzymes for its activity. Okay, and this enzymes exhibit specificity. They are specific for substrate so they exhibit specificity and they require coenzyme for its activity. So how can we uh, classify or uh, describe an enzyme? It can be a monomeric enzyme because all the enzymes are proteins, right? It can be a single polypeptide chain. It can, it can be a, a, a two or more polypeptide chain. It can be an enzyme complex. Or for example, if the enzyme has only one polypeptide chain, so that is called monomeric enzyme. If the enzyme has more than one polypeptide chain, then that is called oligomeric okay oligomeric enzymes and multi enzyme complex means if you see that there are complex of enzymes and there are different reaction sites for example if you see fatty acid synthase complex it has seven subunits right each unit will perform different function so it is a complex of enzyme whose reactions are located at different sites of the enzyme so that as a whole function as one single complex so those are called multi enzyme complex fatty acid synthase pyruvate dehydrogenase yes pyruvate dehydrogenase has three enzyme complex right yes 
So this is all about the features of uh, uh, enzymes. It can be a monomeric enzyme, it can be an oligomeric enzyme or it can be a multi-enzyme complex. Yes, so enzymes require coenzymes for its activity. So they require cofactors, otherwise called coenzymes for their activity. So how these cofactors can be classified? They can be inorganic. They can be organic. Okay, so inorganic means the metal ions. The metal ions are required for the activity of enzyme. So they are called inorganic cofactor. Example, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, manganese selenium okay all the metal ions they exist as co they, they exist as cofactors they are required for the activity of the enzyme organic cofactor so organic cofactor can be classified into coenzymes and prosthetic group coenzymes and prosthetic group prosthetic group is tightly bound to the enzyme and coenzyme is loosely bound to the enzyme so that is the only difference between coenzyme and prosthetic group both are organic compounds or organic parts but the coenzyme is loosely bound to the uh, enzymes and the prosthetic group is tightly bound to the enzyme. Yes, holoenzyme. Holoenzyme means complete enzyme. Okay, so holo, when will you tell that enzyme is a holoenzyme? When the enzyme is bound to coenzyme, the apoenzyme is bound to coenzyme. Okay, so coenzyme and apoenzyme. Apoenzyme is a protein part. We all know enzymes are basically proteins. So the protein part of the enzyme is called apoenzyme. And the non-protein part of the enzyme is called coenzyme. And if that is loosely bound, that is called coenzyme. If the non-protein part is tightly bound, that is called prosthetic group. So both coenzyme and apoenzyme will combine and form a complete enzyme. Only then the enzyme can perform its enzymatic activity or perform its action. So that is called holoenzyme. Okay, so holoenzyme has two parts, apoenzyme and coenzyme. Apoenzyme is a protein part, coenzyme is a non-protein part. If the non-protein part is loosely bound, then that is called coenzyme. If the non-protein part is very tightly bound to the protein, apoprotein, apoenzyme, then that is called prosthetic group. Okay, yes. So, what are the features of this coenzyme? If you see, they are loosely bound to the enzymes. Yes, so they are loosely bound to enzyme. They are very low molecular weight substances and they are heat stable. If you see the stability of the coenzymes, they are heat stable and they are very low molecular weight substances and they are very, very essential for the activity of the enzyme. If the enzyme has to perform its action, they should have coenzyme along with it then only the enzyme can perform its action so they are required for the biological activity of the enzyme so why they are required because they act as a medium for transferring groups okay so they act as group transfer agents these coenzymes act as group transfer agents so they are required for the biological activity of enzymes so they are loosely bound they are heat stable and they are, they are low molecular weight substances Okay, found along with the enzymes. So, examples of coenzyme. You can remember like this. So, all the uh, water soluble uh, vitamins in vitamin, vitamin B complex, right? Yes, if you see thiamine, pyridox, thiamine, pyrophosphate, pyridoxal phosphate, biotin, coenzyme A, tetrahydrofolate, ATP. So, vitamin B complex. We all know vitamin. B, it's a complex. It starts from B1 to B12, right? So, each vitamin will act as a coenzyme. They uh, helps in transferring groups between the reactants. So, vitamin B and uh, vitamin B most predominantly forms the coenzyme. So, thiamine pyrophosphate, it helps in the transfer of hydroxyethyl group. Pyridoxal phosphate, it helps in the transfer of amino group. Biotin, because all the carboxylase enzyme require biotin as coenzyme because it helps in transferring carboxyl group, carbon dioxide group and coenzyme A, it transfers acyl, acyl groups, okay, yes, tetrahydrofolate, it transfers single carbon groups, that is one carbon groups and ATP, it helps in transferring phosphate group. So, you can remember the examples of coenzyme are the vitamin B complex, vit, vit, vitamin B complexes. Okay, so each vitamin will transfer each group and thereby acts as a coenzyme for that particular enzyme. Is that clear? Yes. So moving on to the metals, you have to remember few examples of each metal. For example, zinc. Carbonic anhydrase requires zinc as cofactor 
and carboxypeptidase requires zinc alcohol dehydrogenase requires zinc as cofactor and the iron requiring enzymes the enzymes in the electron transport chain the cytochrome oxidase yes and catalase peroxidase and xanthine oxidase require iron and the molybdenum requiring enzyme xanthine oxidase okay and copper requiring enzyme tyrosinase lysyl oxidase superoxide dismutase okay superoxide dismutase so you have to remember few enzymes as examples for each metal okay yes what is specificity okay that enzyme is specific for that substrate so how the enzyme can exhibit its specificity there are four types of specificity stereo specificity absolute specificity group specificity and bond specificity as the name indicates stereo specificity so that enzyme is specific for one isomer okay stereo isomer one isomer absolute specificity means it is specific for only that substrate it is very absolute okay for example urease enzyme is specific only for urea that is absolute specificity bond specificity that enzyme will break only this bond if you see amylase it breaks only alpha 14 linkage glucosidase enzyme okay so that enzyme is specific only for that bond and group means this enzyme is going to cleave if uh, it contains certain group if the reactant has certain group for example this enzyme is going to cleave if the protein contains a basic amino acids this enzyme will act upon a particular site where it contains acidic amino acids so these are group so these are the four types of specificity an enzyme can exert on its substrate yes so stereo specificity the enzymes are specific for a particular isomer if it acts only on d isomer it acts only on d isomer for example l amino acid oxidase will act only upon l amino acid it will not act upon d amino acid okay this is called stereo specificity absolute specificity means the enzyme is specific for a particular substrate for example glucose oxidase will act only upon glucose it will not act upon galactose urease will act only upon urea so this is absolute specificity specific for that particular substrate and group specificity for example trypsin will hydrolyze if uh, the protein the contains basic amino acids chymotrypsin will hydrolyze if the protein uh, contains aromatic amino acids so these are all group specificity okay and bond <coughs> sorry bond means that enzyme is specific to that particular bond peptidase enzyme cleaves only peptide bond glucosidase enzyme cleaves only glucoside bond glycoside bond okay glycosidase cleaves only glycosidic bond proteolytic enzymes cleaves only peptide bond so this is bond specificity this is how the enzyme can be specific for a particular substrate okay so how can we express this enzyme what are the units of this enzyme okay it can be expressed in uh, three forms for example cattle international units and turnover number the most common one which we are using to express the enzyme are international units international units per liter it is the rate or the rate of the reaction catalyzed by the enzyme is expressed uh expressed in these units assuming that it is proportional to the quantity of the enzyme present yes the rate of the reaction will be proportional to the quantity of the enzyme so we are expressing in uh, expressing that uh, in these units for example cattle international units and turnover number we will see the definition of each one cattle means if or it is defined as the number of mole of substrate okay number of mole of substrate transformed into product per second okay per second per liter of sample that is cattle so instead of 1 mole you write it as 1 micromole instead of 1 second you write it as per minute then it becomes international units per liter it is the number of mole of substrate that is being converted into product per second in 1 liter of sample that is cattle international unit is number of micromole of substrate that is being converted into product per minute in 1 liter of sample that is called international unit turnover number is the number of substrate molecule transformed into product per unit okay per unit time by a single enzyme molecule that is called turnover number 
okay so it is the number of substrate molecules transformed per unit time okay by a single enzyme so a single enzyme how much number of substrate it is con converting it to product per unit time that is called turnover number so which one is most commonly used to express uh, the enzyme activity it is international units per liter why this is used because the rate of the reaction catalyzed by the enzyme is approximately or uh, uh, proportionate to the quantity of the enzyme which is present in the solution okay the most commonly expressed unit are international units per liter the amount of sub enzyme or the amount of enzyme that will convert one micromole of substrate to product per minute in one liter of a sample okay so what are the uses of enzyme why are we studying about this enzyme yes applications so what are the clinical applications where can we use this enzyme we can use this enzyme for diagnosis we can use this enzyme for therapeutics for treatment okay and we can use this enzyme for uh, diagnostic uses for example uh, in elisa okay horse radish peroxidase enzyme hrp horse radish peroxidase enzyme can be used okay enzymes are utilized in diagnostic procedures so that is diagnostic uses okay but enzymes also helpful in deriving at a diagnosis of a disease it helps in treatment of a disease and industrial uh, uses like it helps in production of recombinant proteins because we all know type 1 uh, uh, diabetes mellitus we have to uh, give insulin to the patient how insulin is produced yes so for the production of this recombinant proteins for example insulin and other growth hormones the enzymes are involved okay so this is the application of enzymes so clinical and industrial clinically it is used to diagnose a disease it is used for the treatment of the disease it is used in diagnostic techniques and industrial application it is required for the production of hormones in large amount okay yes so that is all about proteins so in today's class we saw what are proteins what is the definition of proteins and what are the properties of the proteins okay and what are the specificity of the proteins and what are the units in which the enzymes can be expressed and their clinical applications okay so in the next class we will see the mode of action and the factors affecting the enzyme activity thank you